slowly getting ready for round five and actually have the first player's deck list that we're gonna pull up here in a second. And lo and behold, we have another Shadow Paladin. So this was one of the exciting moments for me because I had already talked to them. They didn't know what I was playing. I talked to the production people that were in the room with us when we were about to play our game. And when I watched the stream afterwards, I realized they're so disappointed at first because they're like, oh, another Shadow Paladins player. And then they see what I'm playing. So this is the exact reaction that I was hoping for. Ooh, this Claret! one's tough. Oh, oh, it's Claret, Claret Sword! Let's go! Oh my gosh, this... Weakness is a sin! No sin, no sin there's nothing quite as satisfying as commentators being as excited about what you're playing as how you feel about what you're playing. It's so good. All right, we've got our favorite Kanzaki cosplayer here. It's Siren136, representing Shadow Paladin, but not playing the, the war that everyone's expecting, bringing Claret Sword Dragon. I love I'll this. let I'm you sorry. Yeah. I love this. I'll, I'll, I'll let you start it off, Aaron. Aaron boy. I, I am a Claret fanboy. I love this. I played it in V era. I played it in G era. I wish it was a little bit better in G era, but still, I loved it. Oh, this deck has one gimmick and one gimmick only. Give me a restanding Vanguard. Oh, from the looks of this deck, we got to keep in mind this is still premium. I'm seeing a Sharon. I'm seeing. What is, what, help me out. What is that grade two uh, next to grade three searcher? Grade two. No, is that Maka? I believe so. That is like the OG, OG Maka, isn't it? Yeah, it is. So the grade two Maka, the original Maka that I was running, I might have a copy of it laying around still. Um, the cool thing here was that, let's see what I've got on, uh, this card. The OG Maka. They were confused by this at first. Um, they kind of figured it out eventually, but this was a tech that me and Noman had worked on when I was first developing this Claret list. And it basically, because we were playing stands and crits, and we weren't sure how the deck was going to do, really, um, it allowed us to have another way to multi attack. So you'll see it later on in the clip where. I uh, swing, then swing with Maka, and then Maka skill, call over, call him, and then can swing again, and then Vanguard, and then if I had a stand trigger back from the unit I called from Maka, they, it just gave us good options, I think, for, uh, for a competitive, as competitive as you can be without the promo version of Claret. It is the GB1 Maka from, like, the, the Legend deck, from Ren's Legend deck. That's right. Okay, so not fully OG. Let's see. Oh yeah, it is the Amber Clone. When this unit to Vanguard and is boosted, you may pay the cost. Search your deck for up to one grade one. Call it a rigor and shuffle. So multi attack and it. This is that's Claret's basic um, Dagda. That's that's Claret's. Yeah, Dagda. this is this is Claret's Dagda. And for those of you not too hip with the lingo, what an Amber Clone is is basically just. Uh, a Vanguard unit back in G, which was all the same kind of effects. When this attacks a Vanguard while boosted, pay the cost, do X. That was kind of in line with your clan. So yes, in the case of Maka well. here, yeah, in the case of Maka here, uh, her effect is when this attacks a Vanguard, if it's boosted, counterblast one, search your deck for up to one grade one card and call it to rear, shuffle your deck. So basically this brings all the fuel needed for all your grade ones required off of Claret Sword Dragon. Exactly. Now, like I mentioned, this is a V uh, Claret Sword type of deck, but we are in premium, which means the strides are going to be a very crucial part here. And one stride in particular, because you are running Claret Sword Dragon, is more than likely going to be uh, Chain Core Dragon. So um, a lot of a lot of uh, the G Zone stuff, people were thinking Chain Ranker. Um because chain ranker skill allows you to copy uh, your vanguard skill which is good um, and people assumed that we were going to use it for claret not the case it's there if we need it for claret skill but morfessa is just a million times better as far as the strides go for shadow paladins there's no reason to not play the deck like turbo morfessa it's just 
if you're trying to be competitive with Claret, that's the smartest way to do it because we don't have the promo. So copying Claret's skill is really only a one shot. So if you whiff it, you may, depending on how much you filter your deck, you may get two shots at it. But it's not often that it happens, so you really want to set up um, as much advantage as you can in your plays. So Morfessa always comes out better. That's why we ran such a low count of Chain Ranker. Um, now this is way after BRO. We're at the BSF uh, 2022 season right now. I probably would up the Chain Ranker count. Um, but like I said, it's, it's not necessary. Although, I'm only seeing one copy of it. Let's not forget that Shadow Paladin's strongest stride is still probably Morfessa. You're like, not wrong, but come on, clear it. Yeah, like being able to copy <laughs> Claret Swords Dragon, like I can, I can imagine the game to be like this. Let's say that we we get first stride. Our first stride probably is going to be Chain Ranker Dragon to get that Restanding Vanguard, right? Our next maybe, stride. Maybe not. Hold up. I still might. You are completely right. Morfessa is a strong card, and more more than likely she is the go to. You got 18 grade ones in this deck. You got more <laughs> than enough ways to put them into drop zone, which means you're gonna get to that ritual 10. Morfessa is more likely to probably first strike, because honestly, I'd save the restanding cleared stride with uh, Chain Core Dragon whenever GB3 is acting if it's really dangerous. You know what? I like the way that you think. I also agree with that line of play as well, because Morfessa, yeah, Morfessa is a great first stride as well. Don't get me wrong. So maybe that's the line of play. You go Morfessa, you go Chain Ranker. And let's not forget about the Claret Sword stride again. Claret Sword Hellheim. Very unique effect here. Um, when your opponent puts a Sentinel or a G Guardian on the Guardian Circle, or when a Claret Sword hits. Now, mind you, doesn't have to be for Claret Sword. Uh, doesn't have to be for Claret Sword Hellheim's effect as well. On a rearguard attack, your opponent puts a G Guard down or a Sentinel. Boom, Claret Sword Hellheim effect. So, and like sometimes, like this does catch people off guard. Hellheim is a great card. Hellheim is really strong. Um, it's not often that you get to use Helheim realistically in your match. Um, if you don't know what he does, uh, you basically flip another Helheim face up, and then when they Sentinel or G-Guard, um, and you hit their Vanguard, you pay the cost, and you search your deck for up to the same number of grade one or less cards as the number of face-up cards in your G-Zone and call them. So it lets us thin um, a little bit better. Uh, it, there's, it's really niche, I guess I should say. Um, I liked having it, uh, this was something during testing, um, that I was really back and forth on with some of the people I was getting advice from and that were helping me, um, work on the deck, was either we played this, or we had a couple of other options for those spots, um, like Spectral Blaster, Diablo, and things like that, uh, and I'm Inevitably, I, I decided that, to me, I think the most valuable place was to play Helheim. Um, and also, this is a stupid reason, but uh, I also just liked Helheim because he was another Claret, you know. And the, it's my one of my favorite cards in the game. So, I just thought it would be cool if I could use more of him. And I found a, a couple of situations where I was playing... That it came up that I actually needed him out. Um, sometimes for first stride, if we hadn't filtered enough, we needed to filter more. Um, sometimes in long games, where I had to play more conservatively. So you are 100% correct. I do like to see it. Hellkai might even honestly be the first uh, the first stride. Get yourself prepped. If you see that you're in a comfortable position where your opponent is not really giving you too much pressure, and you can prep a turn. Helheim might be the way to go to prep that drop zone, get your grade ones out, deck thin. Yeah, exactly. I do love that concept, deck thinning, deck winning. But yes. speaking of deck, let's take a look at player two. Bring it on up. Okay. We did mention how we're seeing a lot of representation in the higher rankings, so we're going to see a lot of decks that are getting played. To talk, go. they'll walk the walk. Round five. Oh, we've got Aiden Cohn with the high chat love marker there. And on the left, we have Siren repping the Hashima Rin sleeves. Very good taste. Now, 
there's one thing I do want to tell you, and I want you to mull over until the end of this fight. Sure. And that is the selection of over triggers in certain decks. Because I'm looking at it right now. Aiden is running the Cradle Mental over trigger. Mm. I do. So I like want you to mull option. that over, and we're going to yeah. talk about it a little bit later. For sure, for sure. I, I, I'm curious as to see if it will come up because I do know like one interaction when it does come up, it'll be very cool. Oh, you mean the Leslie? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I like the Leslie. Like get, just getting the over trigger on the Leslie is boom. Lots of big power attacks. In any case, it looks like the players are ready to rock. Shadow Paladin versus Pale Moon. And Who's Shadow your... Paladin yeah. Going first. Riding oh, into the Abyssal oh. Owl, going into a 5k. That is sad. You don't. You, if I'm correct, you don't get the Abyssal Owl effect at all. No, you do not. So, riding into Abyssal Owl turn 1 was um, a two-part thing. Uh, yes, riding the smaller one stopped a lot of the damage deny, um, which was something one of the commentators was talking about. Uh, but also... In hand, it was the best option I had. I just didn't I didn't open uh, amazingly. And with the lines of play that I was working out in my head with what I had, that was my best option. But oh, maybe, may, maybe the plan is to actually ride into a 5k because of how small it is. You turn off the ability to do damage deny. There's not much recursion in Claret Sword. It's not like Luar, you can put it back in the deck and call it out and all that. So you're not getting the Abyssal at all this game. But you got Morian Spear. You got, oh, speaking of Morian Spear going to damage, oof. Uh, you got Morian Spear that can get that Abyssal out for a Soul Blast. Get your drop zone count of great ones up. Just start that train. Yes, exactly. And it looks like we do manage to ride into Dark Pride Dragon here. Dark Pride Dragon has the effect on placement. You can mill three cards, and if you do mill a grade one, you can counter blast one and draw a card. I love and that it, card. Like he, he was such a great addition, and I, I personally just love it. Oh, and we're not done yet. We we're going to keep going here, calling down another Dark Pride Dragon. This time we do get the grade one here. So the Dark Pride into Dark Pride. Um, I think later on in the clip you see that I didn't have counter blast for something uh, because I use it here. But the process of doing that, uh, especially against Pale Moon, was that I needed to play as quickly as I could to try to kill him. Um, and there's actually later on, towards the end of this game, you'll see that, like, I, I was even thinking, like, okay, I may not win here. Like, there's a chance I messed this up because the game went longer than I intended it to. I wanted to have it over with on first stride, um, ideally, or before. Uh, and we didn't we didn't get to see that happen. I think it was on second stride this uh, that the game actually that ended. Um, Double Dark Pride was just a filter. Like the the best thing you can do early game against decks that you have to rush in Claret is just filter as much as possible. And when it's early in Counter Blast, it wasn't as much of a problem to burn it because we're only saving Counter Blast for our strides. Really, um, you may have to do it for Claret, maybe not. You don't know, but you're not counting on the on the Claret skill being the thing that's saving you late game. More often than not, it's either multi-attacking or Morphessa Guard Restrict that's going to be your winning image. And this time we do get that drawback. Draw. Yeah, very solid. I do also want to mention the fact that we do have a Leslie and Soul to start things off, so that's probably one of the best... Okay, maybe I'm being biased towards here, but Les know, Les 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 Leslie Fairfield actually... was one of my favorite combos. I don't know. I actually wanted to. That was one of the things I was trying to say. Uh, I was wanting to sh uh, shift focus and get your opinion. Of, I already got it uh, about riding Leslie. Uh, yeah, because it like I said, guarantees it in Soul now. Yeah, getting that in Soul very good for the future turns. And it looks like obviously we have copy of it. Yeah, and it looks like we have like our staple Shadow Paladin engine card in the main here, swinging with a twenty k. That gets guarded easily. And 15k to Vanguard. This is a no guard. We do get the stand trigger here. That's huge because oh, it's Dark Pride. This Dark Pride oh, is already large. Defensive. You do get the defensive, but I don't think that's enough because I think the Dark Pride is swinging a 20k now. But that does yes, get guarded by Dark the Quick Shield. Gained, yes, Dark Pride gained 5k on his own 
and while the same trigger was ripped, that's only 5K, that was more enough to put it at 20, going over that 18K the Leslie was at. Yeah. Now, we do go or, into a new card here, I do believe, and that was a promo reprinted in a clan collection. This is a Static Baton Twirler. Now, a Static Baton Twirler has VR skills that, when placed, you can draw a card and soul in one from hand, but at the same time, if you call something from soul this turn, gains 5k. So we'll see if he, uh, if Aiden looks to put on the pressure here with a larger Vanguard. Calling the night, the Dark Princess. It's Dancing. a very good Vanguard. Like it, out of all the cards I'm looking at in the deck list, this is probably the uh, that is probably the correct ride target that the uh, Aiden wants to have. Get mm -hmm. you everything you need. Do something. I feel like one topic that I do want to bring up is uh, ride targets inside of premium and V premium. Each deck has them. Some decks don't. Some decks have nothing but cards that can do anything on Vanguard. Mm -hmm. We're looking at one of those half and halves where you have dedicated cards that you definitely want to ride on Vanguard if you see them. But it doesn't hurt the deck if you don't. Yeah, exactly. And it was like, we, oh, we're actually going to attack the rearguard here. And luckily for us, oh, uh, luckily for us, this kind of chokes the Shadow Paladin player of resources since they already have a, they already have a damage. They're unable to damage charge themselves off of the heal trigger. Not to mention, technically, uh, technically, hold up, that was a one to pass. No, she, no, never mind. She did gain five k. That was a fourteen swinger. Never mind. It was a, no, it, it was a one to pass because I don't think anything was called from the soul this turn. So it was oh, one yeah, to pass, yeah. and they got the draw trigger to hit it as well. So that see, that's no, good no, to right. see. Oh, no, Philip, sorry. <laughs> you're Philip. Wait a minute. Ah, <laughs> uh, but no, Claire. Oh, there he is. Claire, There's the Claire, boy. Claire. Claire Sword Dragon. Your house, One downside. Subida. One downside. Uh, no CB. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> that's a, no that, CB. That is a bit unfortunate. Now, I wonder how many uh, great ones we managed to mill off of Claire Sword's skill here. I do see the Ritual PG in drop here. Drag Saber, Ezra's in drop. And it looks like we're going to still continue to use some Nevain engine here to just get some more cards here. Just setting up our back row there. No, get get your grade one set Amber up. Clone. Yes, yep. we do have the Amber Clone, the Mako, or Mako we talked about. And I'm looking at the deck list again, and I'm just trying to predict what targets we have. It calls a grade one out of deck. We have a main as a booster, which means any card we call out will probably be just enough to hit the Vanguard if no defensive triggers are in play. So out of everything in the deck, we got options from Blue Espa Dragon to kind of get more cards out of there, get it itself to 10k. Sharing could be a good option to kind of get that counter charge. Yeah, unfortunately, with no counter blast open, which I assume we're going to be looking to probably damage the Nye again. Actually, at this point now, since we get first try, we can probably just go, 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 go hard. Let's take a look at what Aiden aims to do. I did see a Harry go to damage, though. Hopefully, we have another one in hand. Thinking on the ride. Does, and does, it is Harry. Does anybody want to? Does does anybody want to tell Aiden to flip the high chat <laughs> upside down? <laughs> nah, it's it's cuter upside down. <laughs> adds adds more charm because you know, in in like, in the pale moon circus that is like Harry's, we're gonna be having a lot of like upside down trapezes, right? So I think it's flavorful. I think it's flavorful like that. <laughs> I want to say something real quick. We see yeah. Harry go to XL two. We know it's gonna basically turn into a force marker in the sense of let's stack as many XLs on this one circle as we can. Mm -hmm. But talking about uh, Harry and XLs for premium, I can get it. XL two draw. The more XLs you make, the more you draw. Uh, in V premium though, would per personally are you more of a Harry should go XL one or Harry goes XL two deck? Personally, I personally prefer Axel 2 just because intrinsically at nature, I do like to draw cards. <laughs> being able to draw cards means that you're able to see your combo pieces faster. And being able to see your combo pieces faster means you're able to put a higher impact turn faster. Now, it looks like... One. <laughs> yeah, I guess the 10k, the 10k does uh, stack up very quickly. Especially on a starry pop. Especially on Starry Pop. So that is a very good point to make. Now, it looks like Aiden has strolled into the Dark Lord Princess here. And with minimal resources required, 
we'll be able to do the entire like turn process here. We'll be able to attack with Dark Lord Princess, call it out to the rear circle, restride into Yvette. And we're digging. We're digging for that Alice. We have uh oh Leslie, Leslie, Leslie on uh, back row, but mm -hmm. we're missing Alice. Now he could have it in hand. Maybe that great three searcher was just to throw off your opponent, but definitely searching for that Alice to get the most out of it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, what Aiden looks to discard here will be a very large telltale about what the hand composition might be. If we're looking to discard the Harry, we might already have an extra copy of Harry in hand, or we're just milling a great three out because we already have set Alice. Man, if you discard a card you just grade three searched, like I said, deck winning. Deck yeah, thinning. like all, all you gotta do is like deck then. <laughs> now, still a few more circles to fill up on Aiden's side of things, but it looks like we might start going into attacks here. I believe now, we might be leaving that front row rear guard circle for the strike, because if I'm not mistaken, it does call itself back. It does call rear. itself back, correct. Now, what's very cool is last turn, um, a, a lot of prep went into this turn because off of the darks, are off of the princess here, we called Puss in Boots into the soul. And Puss in Boots has multiple, has an effect that says when your Magia unit, or like when your unit is placed on the Vanguard Circle, you can pop him out as just like an extra 5k body. Then, also has the effect that when it's placed on Rearguard from soul, you can also use the Magi effect to call something out of soul again. You are correct. And we did see in the deck list that Puss in Boots is one of the potential starters, but there's another potential starter in the deck, and that's Happiness Collector. And if we manage to see that card, that is a combo piece on itself. Exactly. There's a, a very nice Happiness Collector with a Purple Trapezist a kind of loop that goes on where you're able to like soul charge a bunch. You're able to draw a bunch as well. But it looks like off of uh, the cat skill, we were able to get a static baton twirler out this time. And this time, since we are calling stuff out of soul, the twirler is 5k up. Is that a trigger? That I is... do believe that is like the soul trigger. in. Yes. Put the soul yeah. draw card 10k to the vanguard until the end of battle. The GB1 crit trigger. Mm -hmm. well, we'll go through our attacks here, going from smallest to greatest, because we don't want our opponent to get useful damage triggers here. We do we do get the brand went into damage zone there. A thing that really did come up recently for me in this is patterns of attacks. A lot <laughs> of decks have different ones just because of how they play, but I found the scariest pattern of attack in those decks and those clans that are able to swing with all of their rear guards first and then the vanguard is last. Because mm -hmm. to me, that you have to guard, they'll put, probably put you to higher damage unless you can guarantee guard the vanguard without a perfect guard or whatever, you're getting hit with a potential crit or something that can just end the game there. And you don't know because drive checks are going to be unknown. Mm -hmm, exactly. And then worst is like if they manage to leave one rear guard column standing. So any, any crits that they get, you still sort of looking down the barrel yeah. of another attack again. See, I'm specifically talking about Flagberg, which is a good yeah. example. But another deck I'm talking about that is even scarier, in my opinion, is the V Clan Collection Nova Grappler in combination with Cat Butler. Oh, exactly. I love that combo so much. I'm glad that you brought it up. It's just, yeah, just the ability to have all of your rearguard swing. They're looking down the barrel of like multiple attacks, and then they have to deal with two Vanguard attacks as well. And then they, they're, they're looking at the, uh, of the decision of, do I take this or do I guard? If I guard and they get a crit, then the Cat Butler restands and I'm forced to guard again. There's just like, the, the existing Cat Butler in the, the, the new Nova deck is just a very good boon to it. Yes. Now, if we go back to the game, I saw a stand trigger, which means multi-attack. Now we yeah. get the re-ride. Like, we're doing everything here. And it's yeah, and it actually looks like we've opted to call the Dark Trick Mega the, the, the Dark Lord Princess to the Axle Circle here. So this will swing at twenty k. Um, oh, I think. Oh, oh, I love that. Call the crit trigger. I put it back to Soul Draw more. Oh, I oh, love that combo. This is a ju. Oh, this is so juicy. What a great way of farming more hand on your first stride as well. Like we haven't even touched a counter blast, mind you. No. This is amazing. I love this. 
Yeah, so we're going to use Yvette's skill here to not only get us another Axel Circle, but because this is Axel 2, we get to draw one more. Not only that, like, whatever we call Starry to this... Pop and soul. Is it Starry Pop time? Is it time for the Starry Pop? We're Starry actually pop going time. to call over the Princess here to get that Starry Pop. And now we're going to start Amen. stacking some uh, Axel 2s here. Getting exactly. that Axel. Yeah, you got to do what you got to do. Starry Pop is a much more threatening ring guard than a Stride. A Stride is... An amazing vanguard. It gains power from the heart and has multiple abilities. But on a rear guard, Murakumo can tell you it's not doing much. For sure, for sure. Now I'm curious with the 15k boost from Yvette here. I wonder if Starry Pop Dragon managed to get to that 40k threshold to gain that extra crit. We got a five uh, 5k from two excels. That's already 10. And if that's a 10 accounted by the dice. Uh, Starry Pop is barely at 15, maybe 25, which means it needs 15k more power. Now, it looks like our opponent did no guard the Vanguard swing once more, but those two defensive triggers, putting Claret Sword at 33 here, does make guarding these last few attacks a lot easier, even to the point where it looks like it's just a pass. Yeah. I think once uh, the heal trigger got hit, Aiden exactly knew. All right. I'm not probably going to be able to do much damage. Let me do my turn still because I have the Vanguard ability ready. Let me, and then, that's probably one of the reasons we saw that crit trigger come out. Build hand. You you adapt to the situation. Oh, my opponent hit defensive triggers, or I, I see he has a big hand. And he can survive. Let me instead of going for a kill turn, go for a resource turn. Prep myself for the next turn so I can live, and then when it comes back to my turn, try to go for the kill turn. Speaking of living, we are going into our second copy of Claret Sword here. Off the oh. skill, we're going to mill three, and I think we're going to look for some, hopefully find the great ones that we need to dump out. Get two, two copies. That means 20k to Vanguard. Ha! Ah, this is one of those weird scenarios where your Vanguard is basically on a stride. Yeah. You have 20k extra. You definitely put those great ones in there for ritual. So now it really comes down to player preference or the situation at hand. Personally, I don't know. It's hard I to say, right? More Festa. Yeah, I might go for the more Festa play to put that pressure on. Might even go into Claret, Soul, uh, Claret Sword Stride itself to deck fin more. It's, it's this weird question because your opponent just prepped themselves where they need to be. They got mm -hmm. multiple excels. More than likely, their next turn is going to be very, very strong. So what do you do? Do you put on the pressure or do you try to prep? And I think we're yeah. going to put on the pressure. All right. So we've chosen to stride into Morfessa here. And we do have the Maka there to get some multi-attack going. Uh, this time it'll work. And this time it will work. So using Morfessa's skill, we're going to activate the skill to draw two cards. Uh, we all love to draw two cards. Can I get some pogs in chat? Oh, and we got to retire two rear guards as well. Probably hitting the two mains there because any way to get to ritual 10 is good. Just mulling on what two rear guards to retire here. It's going to be the two mains on the other side there. Probably keeping that one main behind the Maka because we do need that boost. The one thing that we unfortunately can't find out unless we, the players show them uh, show it our, themselves is how many great ones do we have in drop zone? Mm -hmm. Is ritual 10 active? Are we there yet? Now, with how much milling that Claret Sword does and, like, the package of, like, Morian Spear with, like, um, Blue Espada and even a Dark Pride Dragon, I do assume that we should be at least Ritual 10 by now, like, in conjunction with Morfessa's skill to turn triggers into Ritual Count. Agreed. So, we got more than enough triggers, probably, because of guarding. We have, if I just recall from what I can remember, Claret Sword's ability that just activated, that puts it at 2. Dark Rain mm -hmm. did get his uh, draw effect off, which means that's at least 1. Uh, let's see here. Uh, Morfessa killed two rear guards. That's minimum five, from what I can recall. And not to mention anything else that was on rear guards or ditch oh. or guarding or even the heal trigger that healed out of damage. And it looks so like we did we manage to get to it. Dice. Yeah, I see the dice coming out here. Now, mind you, we're on force two. So, like, each of these attacks, one crit, one crit could end the game right there. I feel like that was. Hold up. A spell moon at. Two or two? Hell Moon yeah. looks to be at two, correct. Yes. So we're, we're swinging at like base three crit on the Morfessa, base three crit on the Maka. 
and then Claret Sword on the side there. No Force 2 marker there to gain an extra base to crit, but then that extra crit from Morpesta's skill as well. So we're actually going to opt to attack with the Claret Sword first. I really don't know how I feel about this. Personally, yeah. Okay, I know how I feel about this. Uh, I see why. We're trying to opt for that Claret Sword, get it at higher damage. This is the least attack. Like, the other two are three critical. Yes, if they yeah. hit, it's going to be detrimental, but that's three chances to hit a defensive trigger to help. For sure. This is not only going to put uh, the opponent at four damage and be in killing range for every single attack from now on, but it's also the first attack that's going to open up, or in a sense open up, that rear guard for Maka to call something new that's also going to swing and also be double critical. So there was some debate on my attack order here. Um... <laughs> Uh, one of the commentators said he thought it was very smart. Uh, I, w I was in chat because the game, there was a delay on the stream. So I finished the game and then got to watch the uh, last so long of my stream game uh, on the actual channel. And there was some debate in chat about the order I was doing things in. Um, to me, I still think the way I played it was the best way I could play it in that situation. Um, I was keeping count of my triggers uh, and what I had left in my deck and it felt like the best thing to do was go in the order that I was sequencing in um, to try to capitalize. Uh, so maybe it was the wrong call, but to me it felt right and I ended up taking the game. So Part of the um, attack sequencing was um, like what people were having issues with is that I play my force two on my Maka column. And then my other column is the column I'm intending to be replacing over and over again as needed. So uh, my thoughts on that as to not playing the force two onto the replaceable column is that it makes both columns a threat now. Uh, the problem I found with when I was testing with putting the force two on the non Maka rear guard column was that people will just take the Maka hit um, and then they'll guard your Force 2 column. When both columns have to be guarded because your first column's a good number, they can't take that damage because they're like, okay, I gotta guard the Maka and then I've got another attack. So it makes every attack a threat instead of just one column a threat. Mm -hmm. So speaking of defenses, we do get the defensive trigger. However, it is it's only... only only 5k. Now, what I like what you said about the attack order as well. I wanted to point out. Let's say that our opponent, the Pale Moon player, did happen to get that fourth damage heal trigger. That one would be live. The third one, no. But even with that fourth damage heal trigger, these two attacks here, they're lethal. These two attacks would then be lethal without any bonus crits. So I exactly. think that attack order was very smart. And now that you have a Grade one on that other column that just uh, popped up. It is also the grade three searcher, uh, Brandwin, that gains 5k, making it an overall, if I'm not mistaken, 28k double critical that needs to be guarded with two or more. For sure, for sure. And getting that random guard restrict there, that's, that's what makes this so hard. Guard restrict, like turn guard restrict in combination with multi attack, that's a lot of cards in hand that you need to have had farmed in your prior turn to try and survive. Exactly. I want to bring it up really quick. We just had this discussion with my group. The A recent reveal for Boost Set 4, uh, 4 for the standard saw a Stoikea Grade 1 that is only at 8k, but has a very simple ability when it attacks from back row, you have to guard with 2 or more. If you just boost it by 5k, that's already enough to hit a Vanguard, and it's a poke. With no interceptors or anything, that's eating two cards out of your hand. A 5k to guard unit on regular basis is eating two cards out of your hand. Mm -hmm. Those effects are very strong because it doesn't have to be big power. It just needs to eat hand. Exactly, exactly. And that actually attacks like a concept that used to go over back on yellow card called guard efficiency. Basically, like the efficient guard for a 13k attack to your 13k vanguard, that's 5k. Just like a one card guard. But when you start introducing these guard restrict stuff, that's when these your guards start becoming less efficient. And being able to introduce like your opponent to force force them to guard less efficiency, that also brings up a lot of like thinking that your opponent has to do. And as they have to think more and more as to like how to make the guards more efficient while having to deal with this guard restrict, that's where the misplace comes.
So it looks like now we're swinging with Morfessa. I wonder if Siren is going to use the the crit the crit skill here. Oh, I do see that over trigger in hand though. So we're using the over trigger as the guard, and then the Sentinel as just the extra card from hand. We oh, do get the trigger. cursed eye Raven as well, so we do Hold get up. that stand trigger. Hold up, am I missing something? Why What's do up? we restand a double critical instead of a triple critical? That's a great question. Why did we do that? Maybe oh, it's I, bigger, and we're already at four damage. I Numbers guess, but like bigger, bigger by three k, I think. Uh, that matters. Means... You have a, you have an eighteen k Vanguard. That is uh, true. Sorry, we are attacking too. Vanguard. Yeah, that is true. That is true. What's curious though is the fact that we didn't use the dagger of peaceful passing Predary to guard. I mean, to push into soul to gain an extra 10k and draw. Maybe because we do fear deck out because of how hard Claret Sword mills. That might be a passing thought in Siren's mind. It also could be just the, the pillar forgot. Who knows? And it looks like we're mulling on the last cards to guard with. We do throw that PG out. It is the Magia oh, PG three. as well. Yeah. Three cards out of hand. If I'm not mistaken... No. No cards in hand. No cards in hand. Top deck stride? He... Not nope. a top deck stride, unfortunately. But a good card? I wonder uh, if we have the tools to push it into soul. What is it? Card over there. This should be 14 if double XL2 serves me correctly. Easily guarded. And then we're going to swing with Harry here. Any effects going off? Unfortunately, no. It's just a vanilla swing, it looks like. Because Harry's skill is based on uh, on Axel and having Magia doll. So it looks like the point of having this Harry was just to turn that Axel into a stage. And unfortunately, since we did not really call anything from Soul here, we can only attack the rear guard at 9k. And it looks like we throw the Cursed Eye Raven to guard. Now, I think, I think it's time to declare final turn. This is like as much as I would love to go into chain cord or something, Morfessa is a safer bet. You're guaranteeing every single attack is, yeah, like, guarantee every, every single, single yeah. Demark, uh, like, ah, uh, hey, oh no, never mind, saw the over trigger. Um, trying to Prob find a bright side here, probably still need to use Morfessa's first skill here to draw two cards, and that way you're able to turn triggers into grade ones. However, maybe we already uh, have enough. Maybe we already have, have enough. More than enough. We probably more have more than enough. And to piggyback on your previous point, we don't want to deck out. That is true. Well, that looks to be the end of the game. And Siren, ooh, with the Shadow Paladin clan tattoo. Oh, showing it off on stream for everybody to respect this, the ink. That is respect. That is respect. Yeah, so I'm not going to lie. I was having fun. Um, wait, lead up and I'll show you guys. Flexing my my shadow paladin tattoo um it's funny because probably about a week maybe two weeks before bro um me and another one of my local players who's a good buddy of mine daniel went and got uh vanguard tattoos i got the shadow paladin clan symbol and he got a tachikaze clan symbol uh like back on his elbow and uh i don't know it was funny i was talking to my opponent about it before i did it and i was like hey it's like not not to not being disrespectful to you. I just wanted to show it off, and he thought it was funny, so he was like, "Yeah, do it, do it, do it." So I did. Oh, that was Man. that was a great game. Like even even like even though Aiden lost, I think he was able to show off like the the strength of Pale Moon, and I think I think that's like something to be proud of. Like being able to show off that, even though that even though you went second, even though you're able to, even though you got first stride. You you got to show off like the strength of the deck. You got to show off the two mega tricks, and then you got to like if if we manage to get that stride, because of the fact that Pale Moon uses their soul as a toolbox. The moment you stride, boom! That's a lot of sudden advantage all of a sudden, right? So depending on what that top card was onto Aiden's turn, this game might have gone a bit longer. You're hundred percent correct. I do want to give Aiden props. That moment when you see your opponent is in a good defensive position, you change tactics. Instead of going more on the offense, like we mentioned, go into defense to pull that crit trigger out to go back to soul to draw you more cards to prep yourself. 
But at the end of the day, you still are facing down a barrel of something that can say double critical, 15, two cards or more out of hand. Like mentioned, the the numbers don't have to be big. That guard restrict is enough to just eat at your hand. And you got to do a lot of good prep work. And Aiden did try it, but unfortunately, it just wasn't enough. Like, I actually think it was enough. Like, it was enough. Like, you, we saw that Aiden was able to sneak out of that turn with no cards in hand, which means he managed to gather enough cards to survive the turn. It was all just depending on what was on top of that deck to see if we were able to extend the game a bit more. You're not wrong. I think I'm the last person who should be saying uh, stuff like, don't uh, bank on top deck heroes. <laughs> <laughs> but... but... You are completely correct. There was just enough cards to guard. Uh, pattern of attacks, it, it was right. It's, it's really hard in those situations. You see the end of the tunnel, and you can't do much about it to change your course. But mm -hmm. I do want to point out... What was I want to point out? Oh, yeah, clear it. I love clear it. Uh, yeah. <laughs> it was just it was nice to see a different version of Shadow Paladins. Like, Luard is the go-to, but seeing clear it, just, it can get to the necessary grade one ritual count as well. And I 100% agree. More... Like, we saw how quickly, like, the Claret Engine milled out the deck. Blue Espada, like, Dark Pride, Morian Spirit, all yeah. the, and Claret himself. All these cards just say, dump your deck, dump your deck, turbo that ritual. I love the inclusion of Maka. That was, that was, yes, Maka. <laughs> it was a, it, it was a great own. intro. It was a great it was a great inclusion and like like i said uh when you couple morfessa with multi-attacks and that's what we get off of maka as well like imagine if we had two makas going into that turn that's five attacks that you're looking at with like multi-attack then your deck thinning as well with the inclusion of chris raven that means you also have he uh, stand triggers in deck you can go up to six oh, attacks yeah. i think i think that was a good turning point in the game St that stand trigger that, that stand trigger that yeah because of that stand trigger that restood that double critical, that was two more cards out of Aiden's hand that he had to guard with. That might have oh, been. I might be also mistaken. I might be also mistaken. We saw a stand trigger on Pillman. My memory is starting to mix. No, we saw we saw a stand trigger on the Shadow Paladin side as well to get them that extra attack on that Brandwin. Ah, oh, there we go. Yeah, and there you go. Oh. That that extra attack, that two extra cards out of hand, maybe Stride Fodder was there. Who knew? I mean, with the inclusion of uh, uh, heal guardians, the chances of hitting at least one potential target to be able to strike. Because I'm looking at the Pale Moon deck list again. We're running the crit trigger that counts for stride. We're running uh, Starry Pop that's a great four, so it counts for stride. We got them next to Hari, four Haris, and then three more other great threes. So there's more than enough stride potential in this deck mm -hmm. to be hit next to the heal guardians. It's just didn't see it. It's most unfortunate, but no, no discredit to both of the players. They all both played their hearts out, and it was great to watch. One of the cool things I do want to mention about the Shadow Paladin deck, though, is the inclusion of Aegis Mare Dragon. Now, normally in a lot of Shadow Paladin decks, you just see four copies of Ezra's, but Siren has opted to run that one copy of Aegis Mare Dragon, the Overdress PG. Any comments about that? Oh, yeah. Um... It's good. Like I, I can't say nothing about it. Like Overdress introduced these PGs to where if you don't have any, uh, or if you have two or less cards in hand, you don't have to discard to Perfect Guard. And imagine, just imagine, if Aiden had that PG there towards the end, maybe it could have been a little bit different. Maybe he could have saved a Grade Three in his hand to stride with. So very I can true. Very true. The inclusion, inclusion here in the uh, in the Shadow Paladin deck. Because you have Ezra. You have Ezra. You're going to get a PG anytime you want. But exactly, PG, exactly. But having a PG that can save you out of those binds where you're like, all right, I got to use all of my hand to guard. It can come in clutch. Oh, for sure, for sure. Now, I do remember, you wanted to talk about Overtrigger choice. Ah, yes, yes, yes. And yes, Aiden. Yes. So, Aiden chose to play the Aiden, Cray and not the Dark States Overtrigger. I, I kind of see why. If you think about the deck, what Pillman wants to do, it's a multi-attack deck. You're putting stuff to soul, you're putting out of stuff to soul, you're putting your stride on rearguard, you're doing all this stuff, 
So having an over trigger, the dark states over trigger specifically, that just gives 10k and a crit to Vanguard, while it's not bad for the rest of the turn, it is only a Vanguard that swings. I can see it in other dark states that have Vanguards that restand, but for this one specifically, the crit mental over trigger that gives two units to 100 million, or one unit 200 million, I can see more of benefit. And I think we hinted immediately, it's like if you yeah. have the Leslie Alice combo, put the 100 million on Leslie and you're off you're off to the races just boom 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 do you have a pg do you have a pg do you have a pg exactly and, and the other 100 million could go to uh starry pot yeah for easily sure easily hit that 40k yeah and then let's talk about the over trigger hit that 40k yeah and then let's talk about the over trigger that siren opted to use we uh, went with yes. a march noah here now in this deck specifically because we do have a restanding vanguard in claret sword if we were to go to Chain Ranker Dragon, that would be six drives, if I'm, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, six drives because of tri triple drives, yes. Yeah, so six drives, that just in it is increasing your chances to hit that over trigger. Now, unfortunately, we don't run a high amount of grade threes outside of Claret Sword and the Heal Guardian itself to call to rear to try and get the twin drives, but sometimes just having a rear guard to get twin drive off of as well. Hell, maybe just, just the fact that on your first one, if you get 100 million power, your second one also 100 million power with the guard restrict, that might be enough. You're not wrong, but we did see in this match specifically a Claret on the rear guard, which means it's not impossible. Yes, you only run four Clarets, so having a grade three, uh, you only run four grade threes, period, mind you, in this thing. Yeah, yeah. But having a grade three on rear guard is going to be hard, not impossible. I think the merit is still there just because we saw multi attack in this build. We saw Maka provide another unit on the board to multi, which means if you hit the over trigger, granted your pattern attacks have to change a little bit, but if mm -hmm. you hit the over trigger, you're still getting three extra drive checks just from the rear guards, making it nine drive checks total in that turn if you did chain cord with Claret Sword, yada, yada, yada. I'll address the uh, PGs now just to wrap this up. Um, one of the things. Let me pull out my PG lineup real quick. So my PG lineup was uh, three Estras, one Aegis Mare. Uh, the reasoning was the Estras recycled themselves. Uh, they were pretty good. We went back and forth on whether playing those PGs or the Aegis Mare PGs uh, because I liked my trigger lineup, so we didn't want to use um, a different trigger lineup. The reason I went with the Aegis Mare is because of this G-Guard. Um, so on GB1, when it's placed... Flip a G guard, uh, choose two grade one or less rear guards, move them to G, and if you move two, draw a card. So the idea was to G guard this if this had been called, or if I needed to call this, uh, and then moving it and getting the PG. And it actually came up uh, quite a few times um, during BRO, and it won me games being able to get out of attacks that I wouldn't have been able to get out of. So it was really helpful. I was really happy with the list. Um, I worked really hard to make the best Claret list I could and practiced it constantly. Um, and before I dropped from BRO, I was tied for 16th place. So I had done really well, way better than any other Claret uh, in the entire BRO of all regions. Um, I ended up having work that day, and I think I had taken two losses already, so there was no way I was making top cut. So I decided it was better to just drop, have the extra time to get ready to leave for work. So, but... uh. I enjoyed it. I had fun. I love Claret. I hope this is inspiring to other Claret players out there.